Good morning, praise the Lord, saints and friends, people of God. It is a blessing to be alive this morning. I am Elder Ty, and you know, it's just a wonderful thing to, to be alive this morning. God has given me a word in my spirit, and I just feel like I got to share it right now. Uh, I hadn't even studied it much, but I've been meditating on it early this morning. God has revealed this scripture to me on yesterday, Ezekiel 36. And, you know, it just stood out to me and stuck with me, I guess, because the times we're living in and some of the, the things that are going on in the media, like Coach Dion Sanders uh, prime time, prime time Dion is moving to Colorado. And I heard a press conference he had where he kept saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. And that I'm coming, it, it stuck with me. And this particular passage of scripture is about. I'm coming, you know, and I just want to share it. It's been in my spirit. It came, like I said, I came across it yesterday. I'm reading the Bible in a chronological order, an annual uh, devotion. Well, I just, I really listen to it every day as I go throughout my day. I hadn't actually read it from cover to cover in a while, but I do try to listen to it every year. At least for the past few years, I've been listening to uh, different Bible plans of of, of doing it annually. And this year it's in a chronological order. But anyway, uh, the scripture is come Eze Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 8 through 14. And I just want to kind of get right into this. Like I said, I had to prepare a whole lot. I meditated on it and I just want to just go after it because I think that it's going to bless somebody. Amen. So uh, Ezekiel 36, 8 through 14. And before we get into it, I want to say a quick word of prayer. Oh, Father God, we just want to thank you. We give you glory and honor because of who you are. You reign with all power. And God, we ask that you just come down unto us right now and give us understanding of your word, Lord God. We pray for your anointing, Lord God, to fill our hearts and our minds. Lord God, you just have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This scripture, Ezekiel 36, verses 8 through 14 reads, but ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to be my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you and all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the cities shall be inhabited and the waste shall be built. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estate, and I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. I'll stop there at verse 12. But what a marvelous scripture is this, because... This is a time where Ezekiel is prophesying to the people of Israel. And as we know that we are now the spiritual people of Israel. And the scripture that I want to focus on is Ezekiel 36 and 9, which says, For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. Amen. This is marvelous because God is using the parable of the sower or a gardener in this text. He uses parables and comparisons in order for us to understand spiritual things in depth and a little more for us to get a spiritual understanding. But he says that you're going to shoot forth your branches and produce fruit because my plan is for you to come forth. Amen. But before you come forth, you have to be tilled and you have to be sown. So anybody ever felt uh, 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 like when they were going through a certain season or a storm in your life and you felt like you might have been misunderstood, you feel kind of confused, you may feel like God is not there, you may even feel a little hopeless or depressed, and it seems like people are not even around, people are uh, neglecting you or whatever the case may be. You just feel like you're in this time in your life 
but you feel like God is not answering your prayers or he is not coming through for you and things that you're trying to do are not even producing what you want them to produce. It's like you're spinning your wheels even though you're trying to make progress. It's like you're in a stagnant place and you're not moving anywhere. Well, people of God, if that's you, this is a word of God for you on this morning. Amen. So we thank God for this word because in this text, in Ezekiel 36 and 9, God encourages Israel, which is us, because we are now the children of God. Amen. To uh, 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 behold. He says to behold. And to behold means to stop, look, and see, observe, even in the spirit, take in with the things that God is showing us. Amen. To see is not necessarily with your physical eyes, but he wants us to understand what he's saying to us in the spirit. So that you have to take the time, amen, to pause and to understand. He said that I will turn to you and you shall be tilled and sown. And what God is saying is to be tilled and to be sown. What does this mean? What is to be tilled? Amen. We must first understand that when a farmer, when he wants to produce fruit and vegetables, he has to till his ground. And what he does when he till his ground, this ground is not ready yet for harvest. It's not ready to be sown. It's just a neglected piece of ground that could be dry, you know, and it, it, it could be uh, 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 overgrown grass, unkept, it's in distress. Amen. It is not ready quite yet to, for you to plant seed in it. You know, so he has to till the ground. And what he does is he break up the ground. He cultivate it. You know, he gets in there and he loosens it up. He does digging and plowing. He's adding fertilizer. He's changing the landscape. He's softening it, it up from the hardness, from the dryness. And he's preparing it in order for him to put seed in it to sow. And then when it's ready to sow, this is when he goes back and he adds the seed to it. So there is a seed time in our lives. But before seed time, there has to be a tilling of the ground. Amen. And when you go and prepare for the sowing or the seed time, this is when you plant seed into the earth because you're expecting a return. You're expecting a man, a, 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 a comeback or a harvest of what you have planted. Amen. So this parable is about God's people. God has not forgotten about you, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you're going through. Amen. God has you in a position and a time in a season in your life that he wants to begin to till you. Amen. Because of you. Some of the things that we go through, we have been neglected. We have had hard hearts. We have been dried up of certain things in our lives. Amen. We have been in distress or even uh, 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 down and out or hopeless. And things seem like they have not been coming together in your life. But God is saying that uh, I am for you and I will turn to you. So there is hope, people of God. But there is a tilling season in your life. And when God begin to till you, this is when he begin to break you up, break up the fallow ground in you, cultivate you, prepare you for what he's getting ready to do in your life. Amen. For God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he shall uh, 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 repent. For God has not forgotten about you. He will do what he said that he will do. Amen. And it's not even in his nature to lie. But God is truth. We know that Jesus Christ is the living word and the living word of God is truth. But he says that I am for you. And this is an understanding that you need to have in this particular season in your life. Amen. So he said that he wants to produce everything that you desire. But first, you must be tilled. Amen. You have to go through a preparation stage. You have to go through, amen, the cultivating, the loosening, and to be broken up from the hardness, amen, because of the hardships in your life, amen. You have to be ready in order to be sown, amen. And then after the sowing, 
is when he, amen, begin to, to uh, 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 grow in your life, produce fruit in your life. But he said then, amen, when he begin to plant, he wants you to bear fruit and that your fruit may remain. Amen. For Jesus Christ himself is a great example of a going through. Amen. But Jesus, he was also tilled for us. He was tilled. He was broken up. He was beaten. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon us that we can have peace. He was hung up. Amen. For our hangups, nails in his hand, nails in his feet. He was tilled and broken to pieces that we can have life. But guess what? When he was sown in the ground, when he went to hell and held captivity captives and took back the keys of hell and death, he rose with all power. But it was all in his time and in his season, amen, that we could bear fruit because of him bearing the fruit of the comforter. When he sent back his spirit, he gave it unto us that we can have life and that we can also produce fruit. So what a great example is Jesus for us, that he was tilled and sown and produced a great harvest. Amen. For Jesus, amen, he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities, yet without sin. Amen. So, so we don't want, amen, to quit and give up when God is tilling us. When he's tilling us, this is a time when we need to call on his name. When we're going through, this is a time where we need to be patient and we need to study God's word. We need to pray and do our best to stay in his presence because Jesus, he understands what we're going through. Amen. This reminds me of Emmett Till. His last name is Till. He was even broken up to pieces that we, amen, can produce a harvest later. But there can't be a harvest without a tilling. There can't be, amen, a, a, a planting of seed without a tilling. We need to be tilled that seed can be sown. And how? How can you uh, 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 receive anything? How can you get seed sown into your earth? Amen. Into this earthen vessel. How can you get seed sown unless you be broken up and humble to hear and receive God's word? We have to be humble. And we have to hear what the Bible says. How can we hear without a preacher? Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So allow the word of God to be sown in your hearts, in your spirit, because we want our seed to fall on good ground. You know, if you begin to hear when you're not tilled, then your seed is not going to fall on good ground. Some will fall by the wayside. Some will be choked up. But we want our seed to fall in our hearts after it's been tilled and broken and contrite to receive a word from God. Because in due time, you will produce the harvest. All the things that you have desire for that God wants to do for you, he will do it. We just have to be prepared and be ready and humble and submissive unto God. And he will produce the harvest that you're waiting for. So be encouraged. Don't be hopeless because it's just a tilling season. Because Jesus says, I'm coming. And because he's coming, guess what? You're also coming. And he will produce that harvest in your life. But he will not leave you nor forsake you. In Jesus' name. Be blessed, people of God. I pray that this word uh, can help you and it will bless you. This is Elder Time, and I'll see you on the next time. Have a good one.